Hello my dear friends, you're on the military summary channel and this video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous 24 hours. We have a lot of very interesting updates so let's start. And first we're going to talk about the South Donetsk direction where the Ukrainians continue standing on their positions. During the previous uh, fourth or five days the Russians were trying to negotiate with the Ukrainians and to force them to surrender. But most likely the Ukrainians refused any and reject any Russian proposal and they continue standing on their positions but uh, from one side this situation plays in Ukrainian favor because Zelensky and political Ukrainian authorities are able to show another Vuhlidar stronghold but from another side the Russians managed to black up to 1,500 of very powerful and elite forces of the armed forces of Ukraine and obviously the Ukrainians are losing soldiers every single day and while the Ukrainians have their forces black on the territory of the citadel, the Russians continue improving their positions not around the citadel but also in the direction of the Bagayavlinka from the east and from the west. For example, in this video we can see several FPV drone attacks on Ukraine positions all over the line of combat contact from Bagayavlinka to Ukrainsk. The Russians continue the clearing operation and most likely very soon we're gonna start receiving updates from the territory of the village and the situation is getting worse and worse. Furthermore, once again, up to 1,500 soldiers are blocked on the territory of Glidar, and this is a very big group of forces which can be used uh, somewhere in the area of Prichistovka or in the vicinity of Katerinovka Antonovka on the Konstantinovka line. Let's talk about this direction because during the previous 24 hours we got additional update exactly from this area. The Ukrainian sources published the video, more precisely the forces of 79th Brigade published the video of how they were FPV droning and attacking and repelling another Russian attack. Based on this video we have adjusted the map in Russian favor and we have colored additional territory. Now let's discuss the situation exactly in this direction in detail and first let's talk about the 27th of September. This is the situation on the ground on the 27th of September, so around 3-4 days ago. As you can see, we just received first reports that the Russians managed to improve their positions to the south of Katerinovka, and later, during the next few days, we received significant number of delegations that confirmed this additional Russian progress. So this is the situation on the 29th of September. The Russians managed to break through the Ukraine defense belt and to capture additional, uh, additional fortifications. Later, on the 13th, of September, so yesterday, today, during the previous 24 hours, we got additional update how the Russians improved their positions on the Ukrainian side of Balka Salonika. So they managed to cross the river and to get as close as possible, first of all, to the farms in the southern part of Katerinovka and then to the first buildings of the village itself. So the current distance varies from 600 meters to 1 kilometer and 100 meters. And the most important that the Ukrainians could use forces that are blocked in Uglidar uh, to, with the purpose to restore control over some territories to repel Russian attacks or at least to slow them down. But the Ukrainians can't do this, they suffer losses and the Russians are moving further and further in the western direction. And the most important that the brigade commander of the 72nd Mechanized Brigade, Ivan Vinik, was removed from command of the brigade and promoted to another position. By saying promoted means that he was dismissed from his current duties and the sources are saying that are close to the situation that he was removed from his position because he lost the battle for Uglidar. I'm not sure what the Ukrainians were counting on trying to hold Uglidar as long as possible. Obviously it was impossible but now for this impossible operation one probably very uh, highly qualified commander would be dismissed. Now let's move further and let's talk about Kur the Kurahova direction where the Russians continue offensive operation. The most important is that the Russians establish complete FPV drone control, rocket control and aviation control over the village of Kurahovka. If we increase the numbers of this since the, since the 27th of September, we're gonna receive significant number of geolocations exactly from this square. This is the main logistics square. This is the square that Ukrainians are using for redeploying forces from one side of Kurahova direction to another. The Ukrainians are um, conducting evacuation exactly through this uh, chain. The Ukrainians are bringing and, uh, and uh, removing additional forces 
from Girnik and back to Girnik. The Ukrainians are trying to support using the same area their forces in the village of Alexander. So the Russians established complete fire control over the heart of defense of Ukrainian forces in this direction and just during the previous three four days the Ukrainians suffered significant losses. In this video we can see several uh, Russian FPV drone attacks on Ukrainian vehicles that were moving as we described five minutes ago from one point, point of Kurahava the Kurahava direction to another. In this video for example we can see how the Russians destroyed some communication equipment that was located on the mine uh, on this mine. And Furthermore, let's talk about the situation in Tsukurna. The Russians continued their offensive operation and during the previous 24 hours the Russians managed to improve their position significantly. Let's discuss the situation in details and step by step. So this is the uh, line of combat contact on the 26th of September. The Russians uh, uh, on the 27th of September. The Russians just um, reached uh, the railway station. The Russians just improved their positions to the to the south of mine Silidovska and after the Russians managed to dig in deeper to concentrate significant number of forces, the Russians ran several attacks. First, the Russians improved their positions in the direction of Silidov and as a result of offensive they reached the south and outskirts. The next day the Russians managed to improve their positions around the village of Tsukurna from the north and from the east. The Russians took under control first stronghold and the second stronghold. The next day the Russians uh, also by the 30th, uh, by the 29th of September, uh, the Russians improved their position along Balka Lazova, trying to concentrate additional critical mass with the purpose to move further in the Silidova direction. And on the 30th of September, the Russians managed, first of all, to improve their positions further uh, in the northern direction along the railways. And if you remember, we've been talking about this uh, during the previous few videos. In this, uh, let's say, episode, we can see a Russian attack and how the Ukrainians were trying to repel or to slow down the Russians with FPV drone strike. Based on this video, we have adjusted the map. And also also, according to information we have, uh, from the 29th of September to the 30th of September, the Russians managed to break through the Ukrainian defense belt and to answer Tsukurina from three sides, from two sides, from the northern direction along the railways and uh, from the eastern direction from the stronghold that located to the east of Tsukurna. This information was confirmed by different neutral mappers, yet we haven't received anything that can confirm Russian progress on the ground, but obviously we believe that this is the exact situation that is taking place. If the Russians are able to move further along the railways, then Tsukurna will fall probably today or maybe tomorrow in the morning. So obviously, 1st of October is going to be the last day for the eastern part of this village. Significant progress, and as you can see, the Russians continue moving further. Now let's talk about Silidova. As, as soon as the Russians and after the Russians managed to establish complete control over the village of Marinovka, they managed to maintain the line of combat contact and to shorten the lines. So the report that the Russians captured Mar Marinovka go we got on the 27th of September and since that day the Russians were concentrating on their improving their positions between the landfill of Novogrodovska the third and the landfill and the mine by the name of so this is the progress on the ground on the 28th of September. The Russians secured these three lines. Then the lat Russians moved further in the western direction and they improved their positions between uh, to the southeast of Novogrodovka and uh, uh, to the southwest of Novogrodovka. And today, on the 30th of September, according to different mappers, the Russians managed to improve their positions significantly and to uh, start or to begin the encirclement of Silidova from the north. So this information we received from different mappers including pro-Ukrainian and neutral and most likely according to these updates to these updates most likely the Russians are planning to move further in the southwestern direction and during the next few days the Russians will try to take under control these fields and the fortifications on this territory with the purpose to establish complete fire control or even physical control over another road or the next road that goes from the uh, city of Pakrovsk in the southern direction to Silidova if the Russians are able to improve their positions this way then Silidova is going to be encircled from three directions and this is going to be another Bakhmut with a cauldron of significant number of forces on the territory of this citadel.
Now let's move further. During the previous 24 hours, the Russians also managed to improve their positions significantly uh, between Novogrodovka and Grodovka. A few more territories and villages were captured by the Russians. For example, on the 27th of September, the Russians were just on the outskirts, uh, located on the outskirts of Novogrodovka and just finished the battle for the guitar stronghold. And during the next few days, on the 28th and 29th and 30th of September, the Russians managed to improve their positions. First the last Russians go went to the west, uh, trying to force the Ukrainians to fall as far as possible from the railways. Also, the Russians crossed the road between uh, Mikolaevka and Mirnagrad and moved further towards the next uh, strongholds and positions. And when the Ukrainians realized that there are very high chances that they can be encircled in the village of Krotoyar and Krasnoyar, the Ukrainians decided to fall back, basically not even to fall back, but to run away as far as possible from these villages, because once again there were very high risk of being encircled and on the 29th of september we got first geolocation that confirms that either the russians uh, closed the cauldron the hat of cauldron or captured the territory completely i believe that the russians secured the territory by the 30th of september and forced the ukrainians to fall back so this is the situation furthermore the russians when they captured the villages of krasny yarkruta and secured them completely the russians continue moving further along the railways and now the next target is the strongholds right on the outskirts of Mirnagrad. So very important progress. The Russians managed to improve their position significantly and the Russians are moving further. Now let's talk about the Taresk agglomeration where the Ukrainians conducted several counter-attacks with the purpose to restore control over the central citadel. Currently we don't know for sure whether the Ukrainians managed to get some results or not but they understand that these attacks towards this uh, salient is the vital for the Ukrainians. If they lose the battle for the citadel, most likely within the next few weeks they will lose the entire Tariets. So I'll remind you that starting of the 27th of September, the um, Russians were improving their position significantly almost every single day, cutting additional piece of Tariets in their favor. And today the Ukrainians counterattack. Once again, we they published the video with a very good quality how the Ukrainians entered the territory of this um, of this stronghold and how the Ukrainians were counter-attacking and trying to secure and to clear this building. Once again, currently we don't know for sure whether the Ukrainians managed to establish complete control or it just was an attempt to slow down the Russians. We don't know. As for now, we're not going to change the map, but if we continue receiving additional updates, we will return this territory back in Ukrainian favor. Now let's move further and let's talk about the uh, Kupinsk uh, direction. First, we're going to talk about the south in Kupin's direction. Yesterday, the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation reported that as a result of clashes, the village of Makievka was captured by the Russians completely. And based on this video, we have adjusted the map. Based on this report of reliable resource, we have adjusted the map in Russian favor. Obviously, the progress is significant, and there are just a few square kilometers of Ukrainian positions that uh, the Russians are planning to secure during the next few days. And we are talking about these fields between mm, Nevska and the village of Makeevka. Now let's talk about the northern Kupin's direction. The Ukrainians for some reason continue publishing videos of how they were repelling Russian big attack with a significant number of vehicles that they managed to restore and to de deal Russian significant damage. Nothing new, nothing special. Uh, the, the, for the previous few days the Ukrainians published significant number of archived videos. Now let's talk about the Kurs direction where the Russians uh, resumed their offensive operation on the line between Bork and Plyokhova. The Ukrainian sources published the video how they were trying to repel the Russian attack. As you can see on this video, the Russians were using significant number of armored vehicles and tanks. As a result of attack, the Russians managed to break through the Ru Ukrainian defense belt and to capture the territories to the south of Plyokhova. Most likely, the Russians have entered the village of Plyokhova as well, and currently there are very heavy clashes on the territory of this village. So the situation also began developing somewhere on in the end of September. First, the Russians were bombing the village heavily and then the Russians began moving and this is the progress on the ground just uh, for one day. The Russians improved their positions from the village of Borki to the southern outskirts of the village of Plyokhova. If the Russians are able to take the village of Plyokhova under control, this is going to be the beginning of Surja Cauldron because the Russians obviously will continue moving further in the direction of Guiva and then from Guiva in the direction of Satki. If the Russians are able to go through this uh, way, go through 
through these uh, fields, fortifications and cities. This is going to be the cauldron, the Surja cauldron for the Ukrainians. Now let's talk about Glushkova area, where we can see very heavy clashes between the Russians and the Ukrainians. By the morning of the 30th of September, the Russians reported that they managed to restore control over the village of Medvezhye, but yet we haven't received anything that can confirm this. Furthermore, we got additional delocations from the village of Isola, as you can see we have changes on the ground. This is the video that we talk uh, that we've been talking about uh, that we talked about yesterday. Ukraine offensive operation with a significant number of armored vehicles. Based on this video, we can make a conclusion that most of armored vehicles and personal carriers were destroyed by the Russians. But there are a few important episodes that I would like to discuss with you. And the most important episodes are coming from some uh, from some moment where some of ukraine vehicle was destroyed exactly in this point so which means that ukrainians during their attack managed to uh, bypass the village of visola from the south and then from the west and to reach this line uh, the ukrainians as you can see were trying to block the village of visola from the north and not to allow the russians to bring additional reinforcements and reserves as i understand based on this video the different mappers have adjusted their map in ukrainian favor at least uh, some natal mappers show that uh, uh, show that the village of Vesula is 50% uh, of this village is under complete Ukraine control. The Russians control just the northern and the northeastern part. Furthermore, during when the Ukrainians, while the Ukrainians were attacking using this road to attack, the Russians uh, began uh, a counter-offensive operation on the line Glushkova towards the village of Pavlovka with the purpose to cut the uh, the eastern flank of Ukrainian defense. But as I understand, that attack was repelled by the Ukrainians. They shown us the video of how they were repelling and dealing damage to the Russians. And after the Ukrainians repelled Russian attack, they began their own offensive also further in the uh, north-eastern um, direction. And as I understand, this attack was more successful than the Russians' one. In this video, we can see several Russian FPV drone attacks on Ukrainian forces that were located uh, along these, uh, let's say, positions. And based on this video, we have adjusted the map in Ukraine's favor. So this is the situation for yesterday on the 3rd, 27th of September and this is the situation on the 30th of September. And that's it for the short video. Military summary channel reminds we condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon and have a good day. Bye-bye.